Toy Thomas, the author of Eternal Curse, and I am here today to teach Dallas all about the influences in my Eternal Curse series, just in time to help him bone up for the sequel, Eternal Curse Battleground, coming out on May 16th of this year at the Tie Rider Comic Con in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Here I am dressed for the con back in October, but this time around, I'll actually be part of the event and Dallas is so excited. Come on, buddy. All right, so um, Dallas has written some questions to help him better understand the DC influences in the Eternal Curse series. So, here we go. That's a good question, Dallas. Uh, DC is my favorite comic book universe. It's always been my favorite and um, a lot of people will argue that it doesn't really take place in the real world which is fine with me because none of this is real anyway. Um, but that's not to say that it's all sunshine and roses. Sometimes the DC universe can get pretty dark especially if you go beyond what's mainstream and I think that's where a lot of the goal is anyway. Now I didn't set out when I started writing my Eternal Curse series to go through and pick out bits and pieces from the DC Comics, I think it just kind of worked out that way. And then once I started getting some reviews of my book, that's when I started to pick up on a lot of the other influence that, influences that probably impacted me and the things that people like to compare the story to. Well, Dallas, I think I'd have to say uh, Superman, Batman, and Martian Manhunter. You see, um, when it comes to Superman, it plays a, a major role in kind of the identity of my characters. In my book, 40 Days and Nights of Eternal Curse, I have a whole section that's entitled, Are Superman and Clark Kent the Same Person in Two Different Bodies? This is something that I wrote to kind of help me understand the dynamic between my characters, Giovanni and Bletzian. Then there's Batman. In case you didn't know, he's my all-time favorite. Um, he's really super smart, and he uses that to fight crime in the only way that really makes sense to him. But the reason why I like the character of Batman so much is because he came from tragedy. He could have easily been a villain, but he chose to be a hero even though he doesn't have superpowers. And I think that speaks a lot to my character Mira and um, some other aspects. And then finally, there's Martian Manhunter. You may or may not be able to see him in my necklace here, but I love Martian Manhunter even though he's a character that's kind of hard to follow because some of his story is so real to me. Martian Manhunter is an alien, just like Superman, but unlike Superman, he doesn't look human. He has green skin, and he is super powerful, just the kind of thing people love to hate. Uh, not to start something here, but I feel that if Martian Manhunter didn't have green skin, he'd be the leader of the Justice League and not Superman, and I'm not hating on Superman. Alright, Dallas, I'd say the Fortress of Solitude, um, the Superboy story, the 1989 Batman Joker origin, and Martian telepathy. So, the Fortress of Solitude. This is a place that I always wished was real so that I could maybe sneak into it one day. Of course, I wouldn't mess with anything, but it'd be so cool. Um, my character Giovanni kind of lives in isolation. Um, he doesn't have magic crystals to give him all the answers, but he does have his dreams. Then there's the whole Superboy story. Um, he's a complicated character, a, a lot like a lot of the characters in the Eternal Curse series. Uh, but the thing that kind of stands out for me is that he's half human, half Kryptonian. And in the Eternal Curse series, we have lots of characters that I call half-breeds. And um, so when you get a mixing of DNA, you get some really cool things. And so a lot of that is developed thanks to that character. Next, we have um, the kind of <laughs> origin story. Not the first origin, but um, one of the origin stories for Batman and Joker from the Tim Burton 1989 release. Um, and it goes a little something like this. You have Jack Napier, a criminal who kills the Waynes, uh, causing young Bruce Wayne to grow up to become Batman. Batman meets Napier one day, drops him in a vat of chemicals, out pops Joker, 
So one creates the other and vice versa. This is a crazy dynamic that I just absolutely love. So of course I had to sneak something kind of like that into my Eternal Curse series. You see that dynamic developed in both book one and book two, Giovanni's Angel and Battleground. And then finally, there's the idea of Martian telepathy. I think one of the reasons why Martian Manhunter is such a difficult character for people to embrace is because of his telepathic and empathetic abilities. A lot of the humans around him feel kind of violated and disrespected when they know he has these abilities, even though he doesn't abuse them. And it's an ability that my characters, Giovanni and Bletsian, develop, and they don't know what to do with it. All right, you put me to the challenge, Dallas, so here it goes. I'd say that in terms of DC, Eternal Curse, Giovanni's Angel is a Martian Manhunter Superboy mashup that's kind of on a quest um, to find its place amongst the humans while dealing with angels and demons. Well, that's all I have for today, guys. I don't want to overwhelm this little guy, but I think he has plenty to keep him busy thinking about until my next episode, which is going to be all about Marvel Comics. So um, if you liked what you saw today, don't be shy. Go ahead and get your copy of Eternal Curse, Giovanni's Angel at the link below. And also, if you want to learn more about my influences, like I've talked about today, you can check out my book, 40 Days and Nights of Eternal Curse, the official companion guide. And it doesn't stop there. You can join the conversation by following me on Twitter. You can use the hashtag influenced and you can tell me about something that you think, a book or a movie that's in, been influenced by something else. Uh, I also have some cool Pinterest story guides that you can go on and find out some dream soundtrack ideas and even some actors that I think could play these characters. So um, don't be shy. Go out and go ahead and pre-order Eternal Curse Battleground before it releases on May 16th at the Tidewater Comic Con in Virginia Beach, Virginia and online. Last but definitely not least, be sure to check the links below for my big pre-order giveaway. I am going to be giving away a $25 Amazon gift card and some other goodies, but the Yorkie is not part of the giveaway. So thank you, and um, I'll see you next time. Say bye-bye, Dallas. Silly dog. We haven't even put in 30 minutes of work yet. <laughs> Silly dog. It's time to work. <laughs> Dallas, come here. Woo. Are we recording? Mm -hmm. Oh, great. That's going to be in the book reel. All right, here we go. <laughs>